fight of their lives. I put this work in for me. This is my dream, my shot, my time. 58 elite fighters. Oh, battling eight weeks for eight life-changing contracts. What a fight. The pursuit of a million-dollar championship is still alive for you. Who will survive? An MMA reality competition unlike any other. So much is on the line. Literally anything could happen. That's a TKO victory. Unbelievable. This is the PFL Challenger Series on Fubo TV. The PFL on Fubo TV is brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve. Learn more at AFreserve.com. Next Level Hydrogen Water, the official water of the PFL. CarParts.com. Get the right parts right now at CarParts.com. And by Columbia Care, the official CBD partner of the PFL. That's right, fight fans. Our third straight week of PFL Challenger Series action from Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Women's lightweights take center stage. Yandrova versus Cavalcanti, Catalina versus Adams, and more right here on Fubo TV. Sean O'Connell, Kenny Florian, 155 pounders, all fighting for a chance to be part of the 2022 PFL Women's Lightweight season. Another huge opportunity. I'm still buzzing from last week with the welterweights. Uh, and let's see if they can carry on with that momentum. We departed just a little bit from the Challenger Series format last week when two welterweights actually earned a contract. So let's reset the rules just a little bit here. Here's how it works. Four fights tonight, but only one contract will be awarded. PFL chooses two finalists at the end of the night, and then you, the fans, along with our celebrity panel, vote on a contract winner. They will move on into the PFL season here in 2022. Speaking of women's lightweights, that is the queen herself. Kayla Harrison, a two-time PFL women's lightweight world champion, two-time collector of belts and $1 million checks. She's here tonight as a coach and a corner. Now, Kenny Florian, you fought. I know that you've coached. It's more nerve-wracking being in a corner oftentimes than it is being a fighter performing. You think Kayla is going to be sweating more for this than one of her own fights? I, I think she is. I mean, the, although she is smiling, you don't see that on fight night from her. But, yeah, absolutely. You feel like you don't have the same kind of control, you know. So you're not able to control your destiny. Uh, but I think she's going to be a fantastic uh, corner tonight. Speaking of control, someone who's always in control of our celebrity panel, Julie Stewart-Pinks. Well, Sean, I'm so excited to see the women fight. I've been waiting for this for weeks, and so has our celebrity panel. I'm pleased to welcome back former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. Man, I'm excited to be back. The light heavyweights turned up the first week, second week. The welterweights completely put on a show, four finishes. Now we get the women's mixed martial arts to really put on a show. I'm excited to be here. And making his debut on our panel tonight is Pro Bowl wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns, Jarvis Landry. I'm very excited to be here. These ladies are the next generation with a unique opportunity tonight. Last week finished four finishes. This week, we're looking forward to the same. And we also welcome in a new face, a familiar one, though, and former UFC champion legend Vitor Belfort. I'm looking which queen is going to be crowned tonight. That's what I'm looking for. Well, we've got lots of queens from five different countries. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Julie. That's right. Uh, tonight, an international affair, to say the least. Here is our four-fight card. Of course, the United States heavily represented, but New Zealand, Germany, Portugal, Czech Republic. And you can take a look at the odds. They've been developing, uh, especially in that Jackie Catiline fight, who takes on Cammy Adams in our third bout of the evening. Look, betting the prospects is hard for most people, but not for someone who does all the homework and guides us in the right direction, the hottest handicapper in all of mixed martial arts, the duck himself, Ian Parker. 
Now, the duck is not a dinosaur, Sean, but I will get on my dinosaur so we can have a fun conversation later. But let's get to it. So we're going to start off with the first fight of the night. It's going to be the first leg of our parlay. Purely out of fear of Kayla getting mad at me, but Michelle Montague at minus 525, she's going to be the first leg. Second leg, Jocelyn Michelle. I like the athleticism. I like that she was a three-time different weight class champ as an amateur. She's going to be number two. So let's start. Right, let's select it right there. Odds now go from minus to plus 150. And last but not least, we keep talking about these odds. Minus 190 to minus 660. We're still going to keep her in the parley. Jack Cataline at plus 128. And that's going to round off for the night, Sean. Thanks, Ian. We're going to be leaning heavily on that betting big board tonight because the audio down in Vegas gets a little bit crazy for <laughs> Ian Parker there. Look, if you're not wanting to be a better with your own cash tonight, well, we still have a solution on how you can get involved. Get in the action for free by checking out Fubo TV's fan view mode. Free to play, you answer live questions, you score points, and you actually can walk away from tonight with $1,000. In fact, the first question is live tonight already, and that is how many fights will end in a finish? You know, let's go back to Ian Parker. What do you think, Ian? How many of these fights? There's four on the card. How many finishes? I'm going to go with two. I think we got two really strong wrestlers that are going to finish this, finish this by TKO. All right. Well, look, don't bet against the duck. Don't pick against the duck. It's just a bad idea to go against that man's advice. Another way for you, the fans, to get involved is the Fubo TV fan view and Bud Light fan vote. You vote on Twitter at PFL MMA. And at the end of the night, you have a say in who earns a life-changing PFL contract. Bud Light fan vote, cast your vote on Fubo TV's fan view or on Twitter, as I said, at PFL MMA. At PFL MMA. Without further ado, let's get to some fights. We've got four on the deck for tonight, all at 155 pounds. Our first bout of the evening, presented by the United States Marine Corps. Three five-minute rounds and a life-changing opportunity. Julie Stewart Binks, let's get them started. Here on the PFL Challenger Series, we give fighters a chance to introduce themselves. Let's meet our first fighter. Fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee, with a record of four and two, I am Olivia the Phoenix Parker. Fighting isn't the only thing Parker works hard at. She's also a ninth grade world history teacher at South Doyle in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's see if she can school her opponent. And let's meet her opponent. Fighting out of Matamata, New Zealand, making my pro debut, Michelle the Wild One Montague. I watched one and one guy did it super cheesy and it made me cringe, so. <laughs> I watched one last week and I was like, oh. Nah, I don't think it's cool, chill. <laughs> Michelle spent 17 years as a rugby player. She told us it helped her with wrestling and tackling, also being explosive for 60 to 70 minutes at a time. She trains with Kayla Harrison, who's cornering for her today. She said that they get along because they're tough and they like to razz the guys in the gym. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Julie Stewart Binks. There's the queen herself, Kayla Harrison, two-time PFL lightweight champion in the corner of her friend and training partner, Michelle Montague. We'll take a look at our tail of the tape for this first bout of the evening. Brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Olivia Parker, 12 years older, one inch taller, two pounds heavier, but it is Michelle Montague with the reach advantage in the arms and the legs. Just to remind you, this is how it works. This is the first of four fights tonight. Four winners are all eligible for a contract, but only one will win it. The PFL narrows the four winners down to two finalists. Our celebrity panel and the fan vote weigh in and choose a contract winner. That winner appears in the 2022 season. Larry Folsom will oversee the action in this women's lightweight bout. You ready? And just like that, Kenny Florian, we are off to a start. Touch of the gloves, 
Montague in the southpaw stance, Parker orthodox. Yeah, both women very big for the division, very strong. Really curious to see who's going to be the stronger grappler out there. Olivia Parker searches with a left hand, scores a little bit. Montague answers with one of her own. You see that in the open stance, the left hand becomes the jab effectively, starting the combination. Exactly, as the southpaw, Montague trying to find a way to get on the inside, using that left cross right down the middle, trying to slip her head off to the right side. But so far, Parker doing a good job utilizing that long-range weapon, that jab, to keep Montague on the outside. So a little switching of stance on the forward movement there from Michelle Montague. There's Kayla Harrison in the corner of the Kiwi, Michelle Montague. Not particularly loquacious at the moment. Nice combination here, finishing with a push kick. And now a takedown attempt. Good sprawl from Olivia Parker. Oh, Olivia doing a good job of sprawling, landing some shots on the way out. Tyron Woodley, early goings here in this first bout of the evening. What are you seeing? Early going right here, I see uh, Olivia trying to see how she can deal with the southpaw stance. She's throwing a lot of jabs, a lot of um, lead left hooks, but I think she's parrying just a little too much. So if her opponent, Michelle Montague, fakes her, she'll get her to put her hand down very strongly and set up a, a strike or maybe a takedown attempt. Little blitz on the strikes there from Michelle Montague, and she's able to grab a clinch. Parker looked like she was going to get out of it there for a second, but back against the barrier. Yeah, I think she relaxed for just that moment, which allowed Montague to get a better handle on that clinch from that over-under position. But now Parker with that head position allows her to get on the outside. Excellent job there by Olivia Parker. Yes, I think Olivia is just going to a wrong, now she's going to the right direction. She cannot go to the power of power mm -hmm. hand. I'm working. Inside leg kick there from Michelle Montague, and Shut then one the to the outside low kick. Oh, nice, nice left hand there by Montague. Yeah, strong left hand. That's how you own it, though. That's how you own that middle position. And again, oh. but the jab on the counter there from Parker snaps the head of Montague back. Nice exchanges here. Two minutes remaining in round number one. There have been some nice exchanges for Parker. She's got to be careful to not get her head up too high, which allows Montague to land with more power and more effectiveness. A little duck under here, and up and down they go. Michelle Montague with a nice oh. entrance all the way around the back. Immediately goes to work with the right hand. And from what I've seen, this is probably the strongest part of Montague's game. This control from the back position with her ground and pound. And now she has both hooks in, full control from the back. She's about to get a rear naked choke here, Sean. The right arm is around the neck of Olivia Parker, who's able to tuck her chin in and is trying to flatten her own back to the mat. But Parker keeps her high center. Excuse yep. me. Montague keeps Parker high center. Nice. Again, an attack. Uh oh this is this, this is underneath the chin underneath. yep and now she's got her hands clasped this is tight and there's the tap stop 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 larry Folsom steps in and stops it <laughs> michelle montague a first round finish and a proud kayla harrison standing cage side her friend and training partner victorious an efficient performance, especially on the ground. Yeah, that's right. And she never got frustrated. You know, there were times where she was trying to get the takedown, and, and Olivia was frustrating her a little bit from the outside, but she never showed it. Montague stayed composed, did a great job eventually getting her to the mat. We'll talk to the winner, Michelle Montague, and hear from our celebrity panelists when we come back. Another finish. That's five in a row now in the Challenger Series on Fubo.
Watch the PFL Challenger Series plus over 100 channels of live sports and TV without cable with Fubo TV. Visit FuboTV.com forward slash PFL. Here's our Redcon 1 Cajunomics post fight stats. Relatively even in those striking exchanges, but that one at the bottom, Michelle Montague gets the takedown and the finish. That's the stat that matters, Kenny. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it was pretty back and forth for the majority of that round. Michelle Montague able to get on the inside, landed some good shots, but it was that move right there, that suplex brought her right to the mat, and from there, Olivia never had a chance to really get back to her feet. Michelle kept that pressure on her. It was a nice little slip right underneath that hook. Changed levels, got around to the back, hit that suplex, and this is where Michelle Montague really shines. From that top position, excellent ground and pound, eventually able to get that forearm underneath the chin of Olivia Parker, getting that finish. There it is, has full control, has the choke underneath the chin, she's squeezing. And Olivia Parker forced to tap out there. Tremendous finish, excellent submission there, good control. Classic Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu there. Beautiful stuff there from Michelle Montague. Here's a happy coach, Kayla Harrison. Wanted to see that fight on the mat. And that's a happy Michelle Montague. And let's get it to Sean with the official decision in the cage. All right, Kenny Florian. Your winner. Your winner. Your winner by rear naked choke, 357 in the very first round, Michelle Montague. Right here with the winner, Michelle Montague. Listen, I know they call you the wild one, but that was an efficient performance once you got it to the ground. Take the back, she's fighting hands. You get it in underneath the chin, force the choke. That wasn't wild, that was clean. Well, yeah, uh, that's a position that we work through so often and uh, my coaches like drill me on that one as well and not losing it once you have it. So you see me, I went a bit crazy there. I was maybe gonna lose a position if I didn't settle it down. So both of them were saying the right stuff there to just calm your farm a little bit and like, take it a bit easier. <laughs> calm the farm indeed. And let's see what our celebrity panel thought about your first round victory. Julie, over to you. Well, Sean, Michelle said she's practical and a bit psycho. Tyron, what did you think of her performance tonight? I thought she had a ton of composure. I thought she capitalized on Olivia overly parrying, which means her hands went down very low and she had to bring them up very high. They really set up the, the takedown when she slipped underneath the hook. Jarvis Landry, what did you like about Michelle's performance? Well, I think she stayed poised. I think the communication from our corner was on point. Um, and when she got a moment, she took advantage of it. The first round, first round takedown, um, that was amazing to see. Hopefully that sets the tone for the rest of the night. And Vitor Belfort, what was her X factor in this fight? The X factor is when Michelle was on the ground, she keep her ears tight with, with her opponent and she found her near Nick to uh, choke, and then that was it. Great job. Impressive words for an impressive performance. Sean, back to you. Thanks to our celebrity panel. Thanks to you, Julie. Victorious in her pro debut via submission, Michelle Montague, congratulations. Fantastic start to the evening and more to come. Julia Dorney warming up, getting ready, representing Germany tonight here in Challenger Series action. And her opponent, the pro wrestler, Jesslyn Michelle, looking to test herself.
Check out our very own Julie Stewart Binks as she interviews today's top newsmakers in the world of sports on Drinks with Binks every week on Fubo Sports Network and wherever you get your podcasts. Sean O'Connell and Kenny Florian cage side. More women's lightweight action. Three five-minute rounds brought to you by CarParts.com. Julia Dorney representing Germany. Jesslyn Michelle, the pro wrestler from the United States. The first leg of Parker's parlay hit. Let's get Ian Parker's opinion on this. All right, Sean. Yep. Sean Montague, big win for us as the first leg. Second leg up, we're going to go with Jessalyn Michelle. I know she comes from a professional wrestling background, but with her amateur record, she was a three-division champion. I like the athleticism. Tony coming off a loss. We are going to go with Jessalyn Michelle as our second leg of our parlay. Let's get it done. All right, thank you, Ian. Fighters in the cage, ready to go. Julie Stewart Binks, let's roll. Yeah. Our next fight features two women with very different backgrounds, but lots of personality. Let's meet our fighters. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, making my pro debut after a 5-0 amateur career, Jesslyn, the wrecking ball, Michelle. Jesslyn told us she loves pro wrestling still, but wanted to do something legitimate. She said WWE keeps the element of being backstage and having to put on a show while also knowing that your body can handle the big moves, but fighting is raw, real, and primal. Her opponent also knows a thing or two about putting on a show. Well, in Germany, they call me MMA queen. <laughs> no, I'm not saying this. <laughs> I was born and raised in Berlin. I'm fighting out of Dublin, SPG, and I'm 2 0, 2 KOs, and I am the IMF World and European Champion. And my name is Julia Dorney. <laughs> Can you just cut it? No, it, should, it needs to be a one piece, alright? Not only does Julia have titles in judo, sumo, and MMA, but she's also a TV reporter. She hosts the show Rev for a German network. She told us she doesn't work on Mondays or Tuesdays after a fight. She doesn't want to look like a kung fu panda. She says she loves being a strong woman in the sports TV world. Sean, back to you. All right, thank you, JSB. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape presented by carparts.com. Jesslyn Michelle, one year older, one inch taller. But Julia Dorney with the two inch reach advantage. They're equal on the legs. Challenger Series, here's how it works. Four fights, four winners, all eligible for a contract. The PFL selects two finalists, our celebrity panel, and you, the fans, choose the contract winner. And that winner will appear in the PFL 2022 season. Andrew Glenn is our referee tonight here for the second bout of Challenger Series action in week number three. Three five-minute rounds. Jesslyn Michelle in the gray, Julia Dorney in the black. High kick attempt there from Michelle right to off the top. Oh, long right hands there from Michelle. Oh, they are trading right now. Punches and bunches here in the early goings, Kenny. It's Dorney that's oh. clinched a couple of times there. The high, high kick comes again from Jesslyn Michelle. Yeah, it seems like Jesslyn's still kind of shaking out the cobwebs a little bit. She was rocked by a big cross from Dorney. Now Dorney getting to that clinch, landing a nice knee there from that plum clinch. I think it was Dorney yelled out for some reason there in that clinch. Perhaps a low blow. Yeah, it might have been a low knee that she ate there. Seemed like she's okay now and recovered. Push kick there, caught by Jesslyn Michelle. Right hand from Dorney in the clinch. Some dirty boxing here and a judo throw. A little step across for Dorney. Oh. Dorney doesn't take advantage of that takedown. Interesting. Very interesting. 
Another knee in the clinch there from Jesslyn Michelle. Those are hurting, Dorney. Tyron Woodley working against the cage here. Definitely working against the cage. I appreciate the aggression. I think if they can bring the control just a little bit more, they'll land more strikes. They're throwing a lot of volume, but the accuracy is not quite there. So I feel like if they can bring their chin down a little bit, take a couple deep breaths, and really throw some pepper in there, but throw a couple punches and make it count too as well. Michelle catches the kick and dumps Dorney to her behind, but Julia Dorney scrambles right back up, now hanging on the neck. I appreciate the volume striking approach, Kenny. <laughs> Accuracy's overrated. Yes, <laughs> that's right. But they just have to be careful getting that head a little bit too high. They're not moving that head, so both are kind of landing some shots in there. A nice Dorney. right hand again on the exit here. Yeah. And a high kick attempt again. This time it's Dorney who catches the kick. Good scramble back to her feet for Jesslyn Michelle. Pace, pace is going to be a factor in this fight. More of those knees to the body from Jesslyn Michelle. Vitor Belfort, can they keep this pace up for three rounds? I think they need more composure, and I believe they're, they are too emotion. They need more relax, and I think they have to pick up the punches more and looking for accuracy, I think, more patient. Jeslin's landing some big shots in there, Sean. Now really hurting Dorney consistently. The hair. Oh, to the body and to, to the head now. That right hand is finding a home for Jeslin Michelle. Oh, again. big and shots! Again. Jeslin said she wanted to use her physical advantage out there, her size, and she is absolutely doing that right now. Those knees of the body as she grabs the tie plum are really hurting Julia Dorney. Nice work in the clinch here from yeah, Jesslyn Michelle. Yeah, these are nasty knees. And she's doing a good job mixing it up. Big right hand. Dorney showing a lot of toughness. She has a great chin, but how many more shots can she take? Look at her nose. Bleeding all over the place right now. Another step across here, and this time Michelle muscles out. Oh! Of another right hand, and this time Dorney is down. Oh, they're Pounding stop this. away, and that's it. Andrew Glenn steps in. Jesslyn Michelle. A finish in PFL Challenger Series debut. Wow. You go all the way back to week one, Kenny Florian. That is now seven straight finishes. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, Jesslyn Michelle, she ate some shots herself, but it only seemed to just waken her up and she got nastier and more violent as the fight went on. My goodness. There's Sarah Kaufman, a PFL women's lightweight oh. semifinalist. You see the damage there on the face of Julia Dorney. Those right hands, man. And the, the, the ground and pound finish. Yeah. You, the celebrity panel asked for patience, right? Yep. And after the knockdown, I was impressed with the way that Jesslyn Michelle just stepped into that posture and brought the power down from the top position. Another finish, another one in the first round. We'll hear from our celebrity panel and talk to the winner when we come back on Fubo TV.
Fight fans, circle your calendars for the next five Friday nights. Every week, same time, same place, PFL Challenger Series right here on Fubo TV. The top up and coming fighters from around the world compete for a life changing PFL contract. Coverage begins every Friday at 8.30 Eastern. Here's our Redcon 1 Cajunomic fight stats. A lot of volume in this first round finish from Jesslyn Michelle and a lot of accuracy as well. Saw the kicks, the push kicks, and the right hands. F There's our carparts.com damage meter. You saw that shot on the camera. Julia Dorney's face has seen better days after that grounded pound finish to punctuate the knockdown from Jesslyn Michelle. Very impressive from the professional wrestler. Absolutely, and I tell you what, because of those body shots, she was able to land a lot of shots to the head as well. That will get those arms to drop, and you can always mix things up. For me, it was all about the knees of Jeslyn Michelle. She was going to the body, she was going upstairs, she was staying busy. It was back and forth for a little bit, but then Jeslyn started finding more and more success. Got caught off balance there on that kick. Excellent takedown there by Dorney. Actually landed a couple beautiful takedowns. But again, it seemed like Michelle was just warming up. There were a nice pair of strikes to the head there from Michelle. And she just kept going forward. Little blitz from Michelle as she was backing up Dorney. More right hands, heavy shots there. Michelle wanted to use her physical advantage. And here's the end. You see the nose of Dorney already bloodied up. Huge right hand there. Drops her down. Tremendous ground and pound. Excellent killer instinct there from Jeslyn Michelle. Here's that left hand, right hand combination that dropped her. Follows up. Sees that Dorney is bloodied and hurt. And the referee doing an excellent job of stopping that fight when he did. Tyron Woodley likes what he sees there. Ian Parker. He's undefeated tonight. Show me the money, he says. Well, Sean O'Connell, show me the money. Kenny, I have no money for you, but I do have a winner. 351 in the very first round by TKO, Jesslyn Michelle. <laughs> Jesslyn Michelle, victorious. TKO first round in your pro debut. Couldn't have gone any better. How are you feeling? I feel like it went the way I wanted it to, so I appreciate that. I wanted to end it soon. Um, I knew I didn't want to overexert my body due to some physical limitations that I've had, which made for a tough camp, but I did. I visualized it, and I did what I wanted because I had to remember that I'm not this body, I'm not even this mind, that I transcend it, and I visualize it, and I make it happen, and it did. Well, you made it happen, and I wonder how much of the game plan was centered around opening up her guard with those knees to the body. She was trying to grab the clinch. You were hurting her with the knees to the body, and that opened up the right hand, which eventually put her down. Yeah, she didn't like those knees at all, and I think I was a little too nice when she, like, backed out crying. I could have just kept pummeling, but I, you know, this is a different kind of fight. But uh, I'm a grappler. I am a grappler. I'm strong on the ground. I've only been working my stand-up, like, this fight camp, really. Um, but, like, I really want to excel in my, in my striking and my kicks, and so... I thought this was a great opportunity to just try it rather than going to the ground. That's why I got up, because I love being down there. But I thought I should try something different. Well, if that's what your striking looks like, I'm going to go ahead and endorse more striking from you. Thank you. Let's see what the celebrity panelists thought about your performance. JSB? Yeah. 
Sean, two fights, two first round finishes. Tyron Woodley said ahead of the fights that the fighters needed to win the moment. Tyron, what did you think about Jesslyn and how she won the moment? The thing I like about this fight, Jesslyn really recognized early on. She came out with a lot of volume, and I talked about that earlier. I said it was it was the sacrifice of accuracy for volume. They needed to take their time and find that composure. She found that composure. Not only did she find that, she found out that Julia Dorner did not like that knee to the body, and she kept bringing it to her over and over again. If you can land an attack to lean your opponent over, that sets up the head strike. Now, she says striking is new to her. I want to let you know you have a very strong right hand. Practice that baby a million times. Utilize it because it would be a force to reckon with. A lot of people would be scared of it. Jarvis Landry, we know that Justin Michelle won the fight here tonight, but she's also up against Michelle Montague in terms of winning the contract. How do you think the two fighters fared? Well, I think Justin, she did a great job initially. I didn't, you know, know she would be able to keep the pace, but she kept firing. You can tell that she's hungry. You can tell that she has a feel for this level of fighting. I was really impressed. We've seen the hit chart, a ton of headshots. She had a specific target tonight. Wrecking ball, she's wrecking ball for a reason tonight. <laughs> Vitor Belfort, you said that you wanted to see some more patience from the fighters, but this one ended quickly. What did you think? I think both 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 women bring it, and I think I mean, it, Jesslyn did something so powerful because she has the will, and when you have will, it's hard to stop. She went all the way in, and I think she was looking for finish, so very impressive. Great stuff. So we know that this is how the celebrities feel, but fans, you can get involved too with the Bud Light fan vote. Make your voice heard by participating. You can say who earns the PFL contract at the end of the night. You can vote in Fubo TV's FanDu or on Twitter at PFL MMA. Sean, back to you. Thank you, Julie Stewart Binks. So that's seven finishes in a row. Jesslyn Michelle, victorious in her PFL debut. And, my pro debut. Vote for and her me. pro debut. Vote for me. She wants the fan vote campaigning for it here. That's someone who knows what to do when the cameras are on her. And up next, Jackie Cataline. Jessica Michelle's a pro wrestler. This is one of the most decorated American amateur wrestlers. Now transitioning into the sport of mixed martial arts. And Cami Adams, powerful striker, elite athlete. Classic matchup next.
The PFL on Fubo TV is brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve. Learn more at AFreserve.com. Next Level Hydrogen Water, the official water of the PFL. Carparts.com. Get the right parts right now at Carparts.com. And by Columbia Care, the official CBD partner of the PFL. Welcome back to Challenger Series action on Fubo TV, fight fans. It's the women's lightweight sank into the cage tonight. And if only we had somebody <laughs> who knew how to be successful in this weight class, who had credentials. <gasps> <laughs> Kayla Harrison, welcome. Hey guys. Two-time PFL women's lightweight world champion, Kayla Harrison, and also Kenny, still here. <laughs> uh, Kayla, <laughs> two too. fights in, two finishes. Uh, yes. You started the night playing coach and corner. Sensei. Sensei Kayla. <laughs> More nervous for that or for your own performances? It's a different kind of nerves, you know. You just you want them to succeed. You want to you want to see them reach their goals. But uh, it was definitely not as nervous as, you know, getting punched in the face. I don't care who you are. <laughs> that, that part's hard. <laughs> well, look, your fighter, Michelle Montague, was able to secure a first round finish yes, she just was. minutes ago. Nice uh, work in the exchanges and a little back and forth early. Yeah, I was proud of her. She did, uh, you know, this is her pro debut. Um, she had a little bit of adversity where she, she shot in a little early for a takedown, didn't get it, was kind of in a rough spot, but instead of panicking, she just kept her composure, got this big soup, and then once she got her down to the ground, you know, that was business, business as usual, and she got the finish. She said one of the things that she was so impressed in, in working with you and that she wanted to try to replicate was the pressure that you know, there's a happy coach Kayla right there <laughs> to, to kind of recreate the pressure that you bring in training that you bring in your fights are you pleased with what you saw in absolutely you know I think that she was super composed um, she was she brought pressure but it was a, a safe you know constant patient pressure I think that mm -hmm. that was that's an important thing you know they call her the wild one but she wasn't. She was good. Well, while one already <laughs> celebrating with a Bud Light bag. Stick. Is she that son of a... Hey, I told her to wait for me. <laughs> but, but listen. This Camp is, starts on Monday. No, I'm just kidding. This is, this is all about impressing the celebrity panel, yeah. impressing the fans, and a finish will do that. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, right after she got that finish, we had a first-round TKO finish yep. from Cheslin Michelle. So uh, the pressure mounting here. Yes. How are you going to choose? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm kind of, I don't understand why I wasn't picked to be a celebrity guest because this is my weight class. Do I get to pick who I Good think? Point. No, I'm kidding. I'm Not kidding. famous enough. So. No. Um. <laughs> yep. Got to have more, have more that followers. That was a good burn. <laughs> um, no, I'm excited. You know, I think this is really, this is important for the sport of, of MMA. This is important for women. A whole night of fights, just all women. And um, they're exciting. They're good. Um, I'm pumped to see what the rest of the night brings. I know you want to get backstage and hang out with Michelle, but will you do us a favor, sit down, call this next fight with us? Do I get do I get a beer while I do it? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, yes, I'd love not? to. I'd why love not? to. I'd Sean love to. needs some help. Kenny so you always need to drinks on the job. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look. More lightweights jumping in. Columbia Care will present this fight. Jackie Cataline, highly decorated amateur wrestling career taking on Cammy Adams, who actually has the edge in mixed martial arts experience. So it's a wrestler versus someone who's a little bit more experienced in the fight game. How are we picking this one? I think this <laughs> might be the final leg of a parlay. Ian Parker, am I correct in that one? Per usual, Sean, you're correct. Third leg of the parlay, we got Jackie Cataline. I think that wrestling foundation is gonna be too much for her opponent. I know she's your friend and I apologize for picking against her, but it's time to bring home the bacon. It's time to cash this parlay. I think we're gonna get it done here. All right, thanks, Ian. All right, so Parker's parlay, two out of three. But as you know, with the parlays, you gotta hit them all to get that plus money payout. Let's go back to Julie Stewart Binks. Sean, our third fight of the night features two women making their pro MMA debuts. Let's look at who's looking to make a name for themselves. I'm fighting out of Salt Lake City, Utah, making my pro MMA debut. <laughs> well, I'm not an announcer, obviously. Last try, here we go. I'm fighting out of Salt Lake City, Utah, making my pro MMA debut, Cammy Double Whammy Adams. 
Jeez. <laughs> oh boy, hope that one worked. Guys, Cammy got the call to fight tonight when she was shopping at Target. She's also the mother of a 19 and 17 year old daughters who play basketball. She said it's great all of us get to be athletes at the same time. Cammy told us she's endured a lot of personal adversity, but has done a lot of deep personal work to overcome mental health challenges. She said, I know I'm here for a reason. Now it's time to meet her opponent. Fighting out of Eastvale, California, two-time U.S. Open champion and Pan American wrestling champion. Making my pro debut, Jackie the Hybrid Catiline. <laughs> Jackie's also a mother of two, a full-time electrician and a two-time U.S. Open wrestling champion. She fell just short of making the 2016 Olympics, also tried to make the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but when it was postponed, she realized she didn't want to do that anymore, but says her wrestling is far superior than anyone else's in the division, and she said it will cause problems. Sean, over to you. Take a look at our Columbia Care tale of the tape for this third bout of the evening. Cammy Adams, three years older, one inch taller, two inch reach advantage in both the arms and the legs over Jackie Catiline, the wrestler. How do you win a contract in the PFL Challenger Series? Well, first you gotta win your fight. Those fight winners are then narrowed down to two finalists by the league celebrity panel cast a vote the fans cast a vote and choose the contract winner that winner appears in our pfl season here in 2022 and there's our referee larry Folsom, the lovely lauren cage side and here we are Cammy Adams in the gray, Jackie Cataline in the black, immediately reaches to clinch and attempt to take down here. Underhooks and presses Adams against the cage. Kayla Harrison sitting cage side with us to call this fight. Uh, Cataline said, you need a new Kayla Harrison and I'm it. Yeah, I've, I've been hearing this about this girl. I heard that she's a, uh, she's a little green. Obviously this is her pro debut, but she has uh, excellent grappling skills so I'm I'm interested to watch this fight be careful what you wish for though those are some big shoes you got to fill <laughs> Catalan able to get Adams down to her back stepping over into side control immediately Jeremy Horn in the corner of Cami Adams coaching her through this grappling exchange heavy pressure on top here Kenny yeah did a good job of clearing that leg clearing that frame and getting into side control now starting to land some ground and pound here from the side control position. Yep, she seems composed, you know, methodical. Definitely ready for her pro debut. Kayla, one of the things that's been very impressive as you've made the transition from judo into mixed martial arts is this position exactly. When you get opponents down to the ground, you're your top pressure is heavy, but you generate a lot of power mm. with the ground and pound. That is, I, I feel like, one of the signature things in your game. Thank you. What does Catalan need to do to uh, replicate that? Yeah, well, I think she needs to, to be able to create some space. You know, I don't typically from uh, side control, I either want to get a crucifix position or I want to get in the guard or in mount so I can create some space and, and land some really big quality shots. You know, these little dink, 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 dink here and there, that's okay, but it's not going to get a fight stopped. It's not going to inflict any real damage. And Kayla, that's exactly what she's doing right now. She's getting yep. that crucifix position. She has that arm pinned if she can trap with the yep. head, and now yep. it's full on crucifix here. Adams trying to show the flexibility and roll over, but Cataline flattens her out again. Kenny, how do you free your left bottom arm if you're Cammy Adams here? Yeah, I, actually, that right arm needs to come up and over the top, see if she can work an underhook there. But right now, she's eating some big, big shots. shots. Big shots. And she's, she's getting trapped. This is a little bit better of a position for her. She needs to pull that right elbow in oh, oh, oh. and then get back to her feet. Oh, 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 oh. Now Cataline's got the back. Arm under the neck and squeezing. She needs to fight that rear hand. She's gonna go Adams sleep. went all the way out. She went to sleep. Wow. Jackie Cataline chokes Cammy Adams unconscious in the first round. Eight finishes in a row. 
in PFL Challenger Series action. They're not playing around. Yeah, I mean, she was she was very methodical, uh, a very clean performance there. Once she got to that clinch, it was pretty much all Catiline there. Sixth straight in the first round. Adams is awake. Speaking, good news. Catiline, not only a pro debut, but an MMA debut for Jackie Catalan. Amazing. Oh, really? Yeah, she's oh. she's been she's been a wrestler. She was chasing the Olympic dream of wrestling. That's fun. I dig it. I did that too. I had no amateur fights. Same. <laughs> same. Yeah. Same. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Kenny didn't have any amateur fights either, even though <laughs> he looks like he did. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to the end. <laughs> Jackie Catiline, I hate you. victorious. <laughs> we'll speak with her next. <laughs> Welcome back, fight fans. If you're keeping score at home, that is now eight straight finishes in PFL Challenger Series action. Six straight finishes in, in the, the first, first round. round. Kayla Harrison was sitting in with us for that one. We, we, didn't, we didn't get to really flesh out your uh, too quick your analyst yeah, review. There's been so much going on. Yeah, five minutes isn't enough time to figure out what's going on. Yeah, that was fun. I really enjoyed sitting there next to these uh, rows between two thorns. <laughs> Wait. That's accurate. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of a lot of things going on, what's next for you, Kayla Harrison? Oh, uh, you know, i just been raising two kids, shining two belts. <laughs> I got chickens. That's it. Chickens? Yeah, I bought it, some chickens, yeah. Okay. Are you going to be a farmer now? Is that what's going I on? I might, I might. Wow. Uh, Olympic gold medalist, two two Olympic two, gold medals, two, two time kids, champion, yeah, two kids, and now a uh, chicken farmer. Kayla I want a baby yak, actually. <laughs> you want a baby yak? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't you live in Florida? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not oh, sure that man. yak and Florida go together. I want to I want to be the farmer. goat, but I want to buy a yak. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll keep it at my house. I, I live in the mountains, at least. Okay. Uh, cool. Kayla, thanks for sitting down with us. You yeah. gonna hang out and see if absolutely Michelle Montague gets contract? She's gonna get it. She's gonna get it. She's if, getting it. If you, They'll the fans, see. don't vote for Michelle Montague. Vote for Michelle. Well, Kayla will Michelle. find you and track you down. <laughs> yes. We can't promise that. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla Harrison. Thank you guys. Still more action to come. So we'll get to that. Oh, don't forget about No Chill. NBA legend Gilbert Arenas and his co-host Twitter sensation Josiah Johnson give an insider's perspective on everything happening in the world of basketball on Fubo Sports Network or wherever you get your podcasts. There's our Redcon 1 stats.
And we've yeah. seen this a couple of times tonight. The most important stat here is down at the bottom of that column. Jackie Cataline with the one takedown that proved to be the end for Cami Adams. Well, for Jackie Catalina, it was all about getting to that clinch, obviously with her massive wrestling experience and high level of skill there. She was very dominant with that takedown right into side control eventually, but it was this crucifix position that really started it for her. The arms are trapped. Cami Adams is defenseless here. Very, very difficult position to get out of. Jackie Catalina set it up beautifully and Cammy was forced to give her back. She had to turn, otherwise she would have continued to take damage, but that only allowed Jackie Cataline to get to that back position, got both hooks, show that she is more than just a wrestler, getting that rear naked choke submission. Beautiful stuff, a very clean performance from Jackie Cataline in her MMA debut, not her pro debut, but her MMA debut. That is extremely impressive. There's another shot of that rear naked choke getting underneath the chin of Cami Adams. Locking it up, cutting off the blood to the brain there. And that is a finish in her first MMA fight. Ian Parker stays undefeated tonight. He's on fire. Jackie Cataline is on fire. And Sean O'Connell is on fire and in the cage, Sean. Thank you, Kenny, inside the cage with our winner. 241 in the very first round. Technical submission by rear naked choke, Jackie Cataline. <laughs> All right, Jackie Cataline. <laughs> yes, one of these. Uh, if you keep fighting like that, you're gonna get to have to. You're gonna have to get used to these. The uh, yes. the well, you know, winners I'm used to interview. Wrestling, but this one's a little different. So <laughs> let's talk about it, right? Yeah. You told us that you wanted to finish this fight with a knockout, and, and it wasn't a knockout punch, but Cami Adams ended up unconscious in this one because of the rear naked choke. You went back to the wrestling. Uh, How did it feel to use that wrestling and, and get this dominant finish? Um, obviously. No matter what, I'm always gonna fall back to wrestling. No matter what I say in an interview or to hype up the audience, you know, I'm always gonna fall back to wrestling and, you know, I, I got the finish for it tonight. So, obviously wrestling's important, but we're gonna watch this whole fight. We got a monitor here. We're gonna watch this whole fight. And I want you to walk me through, right, the, the striking exchanges, how you're feeling at, at the beginning here. Um, I kinda was just seeing how she would react because I watched a couple of her fights and she kinda backed up a little. And she kind of just did a couple haymakers, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to go inside. <laughs> go inside and wrestle her. So, you know, the knockout didn't happen, but obviously my wrestling worked for me. Well, you got the double underhooks here, and you're eventually able to get her down to the mat, obviously. And this is your, not just a pro debut, this is your MMA debut. This is the first time you've been actively fighting in competition. You moved to side control and then eventually to the crucifix position. That's, that's a seasoned move here. Um, I like that position. <laughs> I don't like to be in the guard as much. Um, for me, like wrestling, I want to pin them, so I'm always on the side holding their head and their arm. And um, So I've been working a lot on side control and getting that arm pinned so that she doesn't have anything to block. So, so we saw you, uh, the short punches, right? Not, not generating a lot of power here, but a couple of these you were able to uncork and, and really generate some power from the top. Yeah, I, I was trying to get a better leg position because I, I didn't feel very comfortable there so I was just kind of throwing punches to see if she'd open up her arms um, but once I got the arm pinned then I felt a little better so I was able to come up off of her a little take the pressure off were you concerned at all that she was going to be able to force a stand up or a stalemate here no, no. <laughs> not at all <laughs> All right, and here we go. At this point, she ha she knows that she's got to make something happen. She's got to she's got to get that arm off your head. She's got to expose her back. And did you see that coming? Yeah, I, I was kind of just 
as much as it is, you know, you want to finish it, you want to get it done as fast as you can. Sometimes patient is a little, being patient is a little bit better. So I was just kind of waiting, waiting for her to open up her arms, and she did. And I was able to land some good punches, and once she started going to her knees, I just jumped over there. Jackie, I don't want to belabor the point, but people making their MMA debut are never patient mixed martial artists. And you're talking about preaching patience here. A lot. We, so my coaches talk to me about that, you know. Take your time. Don't burn yourself out. Because as a wrestler, you wrestle three-minute rounds. And it's all out. So we definitely work to that a lot. Be very patient. Take your time. Make sure you're breathing. So I thought I was thinking that when I was going out there. Well, you get the, the arm under the neck, and eventually she goes out. Last question. What feels better, that win or pinning somebody in wrestling? Oh, pinning somebody in wrestling. I've been wrestling 21 years. That's <laughs> always going to be the, the better thing for me. But this, you know, this is a new journey for me. So uh, for, a, for a first f fight ever, first MMA fight ever, I'll, I'll take it. All right, let's see what the celebrities thought of that performance. Another finish, Julie Stewart-Binks. Yeah, Sean, just some great insight from Jackie there on her thrilling finish. And Tyron Woodley, got to ask you, how was that for a pro MMA debut? I thought it was great. I knew it was going to be a little bit of cap when she said that she was not going to utilize her wrestling. If you're that high level of wrestler, you have to utilize it when you see the moments. She saw the strikes come in, a couple gusts of winds past her face. She said, forget this. I'm going back to what I know. Put her on the ground. Let's utilize the striking from the side position. Jarvis Landry, this was a quick fight in the first round. What really stood out to you about Jackie's performance tonight? The thing that stood out to me the most was that she was very dominant. She was very clean. She controlled the entire fight. You know, she spoke pre-fight about being a phenomenal wrestler, and she really showed that. She had a plan for when she got on the ground, and it showed. She controlled the whole fight, even the submission. You know, getting into that position at the, there at the end, um, and uh, it was really amazing to see. Great v job. Vitor Belfort, we've seen a lot of people step into the cage for the first time. How would you rank Jackie's performance? Jackie, you was fantastic. I like the way you're dominating, how you calm, how you was patient. I know you're a fantastic wrestler. When he told you you're gonna knock her out, I knew you always gonna go back to your fundamental. You, you optimize your momentum and you're dominating, and that's what's impressive to me. Your first fight, it's, it's impressive. Great job. Well, some great words from our celebrity panel. It's going to be really tough to see who walks home with this PFL contract. Sean, back to you. Victorious in her very first mixed martial arts fight. Jackie Cataline. Speaking of celebrations, Kayla Harrison said she wanted a beer. Now she's backstage cracking open a Bud Light with Michelle Montague little celebration victorious tonight Yay. Michelle first round finish Woo. Jesslyn Michelle first round finish now Jackie Cadillac first round finish <laughs> and only one more to go Martina Yandrova Czech Republic versus Jacqueline Cavalcanci out of Portugal one more when we return on Fubo TV
Welcome back, fight fans. PFL Challenger Series continues to deliver. In fact, the last eight Challenger Series fights have ended in a finish. Six straight first round finishes. And that, uh, that was a couple of winners, right? Um, on the right was Michelle Montague, who won in our first fight tonight. And then on the left, that was Kayla Harrison, America's favorite chicken farmer, apparently. <laughs> Watch PFL Challenger Series and over 100 channels of live sports and TV without cable. You just need Fubo TV. Visit FuboTV.com forward slash PFL. There's the cage. We're standing here beside the cage, Sean O'Connell and Kenny Florian. And look, I, I told you there was a lot of pressure tonight for these women because four winners get narrowed down to two finalists, and then one contract will be given out. But now the pressure is on you, the fans, who get to vote on Twitter and the Fubo TV fan view and on our celebrity panel because it's finish after finish after finish and only one fight left to go. Well, that's right. I mean, there's pressure on them as well, right? I mean, uh, a bunch of first-round finishes again. Uh, the fighters are bringing it again. So, yeah, very difficult decision to make here. Let's take some, a look at the highlights here. First fight of the night, as I mentioned, was Michelle Montague, friend and training partner of Kayla Harrison, who played coach and corner tonight. Uh, a little brief moment of adversity here. Olivia Parker accounted well for herself in the striking exchanges. Yeah, and I, I think the difference here was Montague really just staying very composed. She did a good job uh, of not showing any frustration. There she is slipping that hook from Olivia Parker got a little bit overly aggressive, threw herself out of position, allowed Montague to hit that suplex, ultimately took the back, got a beautiful rear naked choke. Coach Kayla, she's happy. That's the approval that I've been looking for from Kayla ever since I've known her. She's never going to give that she's to She's never going to no. give it to me. No, no, no way. But she gives it to Michelle Montague, winner by first round submission. And there she is. Wild one, they call her. The Kiwi. <laughs> Victorious in her PFL debut, and there's Coach Kayla. Camp hasn't begun just yet for Kayla. <laughs> Enjoying a beer. Absolutely. All right, so Michelle Montague, victorious in the first round. And one thing we have learned tonight in two out of three fights, you do not want a strong grappler on your back. No, it's usually not a, not a good situation. They have a lot of advantages on their side for sure. Yeah, okay, so that was the first fight of the night. Let's take a look at fight number two. Julia Dorney came all the way from Germany. Jesslyn Michelle, pro wrestling background, but looked pretty darn good in that clinch. Yeah, absolutely. And this might have been maybe the, the most exciting fight so far because it was back and forth. Both, both Dorney uh, and Michelle had their moments, but in the end, it was just Michelle just kept kind of changing gears, moving up, putting the pressure kept landing strikes, kept moving forward. You see the nose of Dorney bloodied up and Michelle literally smelling blood, followed up with that killer instinct, getting the finish. Ian Parker, he's pumped, he's undefeated. Well, Ian Parker, uh, I should have told you that the Montague fight was the first leg of his parlay. Jeslyn Michelle was the second leg of his parlay. There's Jeslyn Michelle backstage with Sarah Kaufman, standing by to see if she will win the PFL contract that is awarded at the end of the night. You can pick a friend, you can pick a nose, but you can't pick a friend's nose, Sarah <laughs> I'm sorry. Words to live by, yeah. All right, so two fights, two finishes in the first round, one with the mm -hmm. submission, and then, of course, the striking of Jeslyn Michelle, a little too much for Julia Dorney. Um, we saw that damage meter, by the way. Dorney's face took a, a lot of damage in that fight. My goodness, yeah, absolutely. It was, the again, those knees to the body, I think, were setting up those punches uh, from Michelle going upstairs, and, man, did she land hard. Stiff right hand from Jessalyn Michelle, yeah. and then you get to the last fight. We just saw this moments ago. Jackie Catalan making her MMA debut after a long and decorated amateur wrestling career, and immediately it's underhooks, dragging Cammie Adams down to the mat. 
and the crucifix position. You know, having years and years of high-level competition helps, but still, it's never a mixed martial arts fight. It's never a fight. You never know how someone's gonna react. And I was so impressed with Catalina, her approach and her composure and how clean it was. I mean, she looked like a real veteran out there. Uh, really didn't make any mistakes. Uh, Cami Adams showed a lot of heart. She was fighting it to the end, didn't want to tap. She was trying to escape, but Catalina, just her grappling, just too much, amazing. Live look at Jackie Catiline. First round technical submission victory. Three first round finishes. All in one night here at the Challenger Series Women's Lightweight. So I, I mentioned the pressures on you as the fans because at the end of the night, you have a say in who earns a life-changing PFL contract. Just participate in the Bud Light fan vote. Cast your vote on Fubo TV's fan view or go to Twitter at PFL MMA and cast your vote. Let's send it over to Julie Stewart Binks. Well, Sean, as we know, the celebrity panel is one of two votes that the fighters need to earn in order to get the PFL contract. And we've seen three incredible finishes so far. Tyron Woodley, what stands out about these fighters and who in your mind is leading the way? I think what stands out about all the fighters is the pressure situation. When I say pressure, it's a pressure of the opportunity, but also they have to apply good pressure to get that finish and get the win because there's four other victors that are going to be challenging them for that spot. I feel like the standout moment for most fighters in this this night has been composure. The one that's found the composure, found that right hand. We've seen them from um, Jeslin. She found that right hand. That's a new tool for Archive. Also, the takedown or ground upon position. Each time the victor found that position and was composed, they found the success. So I think that's what the, if I'm the main event, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking out to go out there, finish with a dominant strike, dominant submission, but also the composure. Jarvis Landry, we know that these fighters have to win their fight and they also have to earn the respect of the celebrity panel and the fans. Of the three we've seen so far, who really has gained your interest? I think all fighters has done an amazing job. Obviously, you know, from the first fight, from Michelle Montagu to the last one to Jacqueline, you know, obviously with the submission. But I think for me right now, the front runner is has to be Jesslyn. You know, the way that she has approached the fight, the way that she stayed persistent, kept her pace, um, and, and never backed down. I think her attitude, her will, and obviously this is a great sport, but you know, she's a definitely entertainer. Her personality really shined too. That's something that I noticed. She was an entertainer, and this is what it's all about, the showmanship as well as the winning and Vitor Belfort. Who in your mind really is capturing your attention? Well, all the women that came to fight, they came not just to impress, but to get the victory, to get the contract. And I like the attitude, they came to fight. They're not holding anything. So, but really show me the, it was something that really showed me the, uh, the something s tangible was Jack, you know, when she was composure with, with her wrestling. And of course she was dominating. And also Michelle, Michelle was like, find her way to, to, to get the victory and she very vicious on the floor and you can tell that she's been he's been she's been working with Kyla and she knows how to get that win and this lady's impressed me the most very impressive performances so far and still one more fight to go Sean back to you all right thank you Julie hey there's all the winners backstage hanging out hoping to uh, get a vote from the celebrity panel Hoping that the fans will weigh in in their favor. Three out of four down, Kenny Florian. And the fourth fight, Czech Republic versus Portugal. Martina Yadrova and Giacolini Cavalcanti. Three five-minute rounds of women's lightweight action brought to you by Next Level Hydrogen Water. I've been telling you that you should rely on the expert advice of Ian Parker. If you've been following along and betting along with Ian Parker since the beginning of PFL Challenger Series, you have now not doubled, not tripled, nay, you have quadrupled your money. Ian Parker, incredible. 
Sean, don't stop. I love hearing you uh, say all these nice things about me. It feels so good right here. Look, we're here to make money. We're here to make the right bets, and we're here to break these fights down. So let's get to it. Last fight of the night, Martina Gingrova, Jacqueline Kalpatanji. The odds have gone up. Martina is now minus 120. I'm not scared. There's something about Kalpatanji that I like. Martina is put to her last two fights. She was a grand champion in Muay Thai. But Jacqueline Kalpatanji, she's young. She's hungry. In the interview, she said there was nothing about Martina that scared her, and I believe her in the locker room. She looks calm, cool, collective. So this is going to be our only straight play of the night at minus 110. Let's do it. The, the audio is rough, but the picks are smooth, and the betting big board blesses us all. Also, if you just want to get into the action for free, Check out Fubo TV's fan view mode, free to play. You answer live questions, you score points, and you could walk away from tonight with $1,000. We actually asked Ian Parker uh, the fan view question. Will we see more than two finishes tonight? Well, we've got three in the books already. Over to Julie Stewart Binks. Sean, it's the final fight of the night, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Let's meet our first fighter. So we'll start with fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Fighting out, peraí, fighting out of. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Fight of, ah, cara, essas palavras aí. Fighting of, não, peraí, peraí. Fighting. Fighting. Ah, fighting, fighting or fight? Fighting. Ah, fighting. Fighting out of. Fighting of, of, of. Fighting out of. Ah, fighting out of. Fighting out of São Paulo, Brazil, by way of Portugal. <laughs> I'm undefeated, keep. Ah, vai outra vez. I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated and 2 and 0. Oh. Jacqueline Cavalcante! <laughs> Jacqueline Cavalcanti doesn't speak English, but she really wanted to try in that interview. She was born into a fighting family in Brazil and moved to Portugal, where she's been for the last 13 years. I asked her if she was a fan of Neymar or Ronaldo. She said she's inspired by Cristiano Ronaldo. Based on his winning mindset, he's accomplished everything and still wants to keep beating his own records. Let's see who she's up against tonight. I love Rafael Nadal. <laughs> I love football, <laughs> tennis, all the sports, ice hockey. I wanted to be a ice hockey goalkeeper when I was a child. I'm from Prague, Czech Republic. My record is 3-2 with one submission and one technical knockout. I'm Martina Indrova. Martina Yandrova is from the Czech Republic, but she is wearing the Ukrainian flag tonight. She told me that she once scheduled to fight Chris Cyborg, but had to withdraw due to injury. She is also one of her favorite fighters and inspiration. She says she hopes Chris Cyborg comes to the PFL. And Martina said her strength is her right hand, a self-described brutal fighting machine. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, JSB. Here's our next level hydrogen water tale of the tape. Jacqueline Cavalcanti, our youngest fighter on the card tonight at 24 years of age. She's an inch taller, has a three inch reach advantage in the arms, two extra inches in the legs. The lovely Lauren Cage side, and here is how the PFL Challenger Series format works. Each night, four fights and one contract. Four winners are eligible, but they are narrowed down to two finalists by the PFL. Then our celebrity panel weighs in. You, the fans, have a chance to weigh in, and your votes decide who wins the contract. That winner then appears in a PFL 2022 season. Andrew Glenn will oversee our final bout of the evening here in Orlando, Florida. You ready? You ready? We're underway here. Three five-minute rounds, a touch of the gloves, Cavalcanti in the gray, Yandrova in the black. Double jab from Cavalcanti out of Portugal. 
inside leg kick from the Czech Republic representative. Yeah, curious to see how Yandrova deals with the reach advantage and those long-range weapons of Kavalkanji. Kavalkanji does a great job of keeping her opponents on the outside, but Yandrova very experienced as a striker. So, fascinating matchup here. A lot of feints here. <coughs> Measuring the distance, both women. Little exchange. Nothing landing super solid just yet. Yeah, both women, very seasoned strikers. Jindrova likes to use a lot of high kicks. Kavakanchi loves to use a lot of low kicks. And just as you said, it, it was Kavakanchi who went high. Yeah. I love when they do that to you, Kim. Yeah, exactly. She, I mean, she mixes things up. She has a lot of different weapons, but primarily loves to use that jab and calf kick. <clears throat> All right, Tyron Woodley, we've seen fast and furious action in our earlier fights, and they're just getting into it here now. Yeah, right when you said that, they got into a little bit of exchange right then and there. Um, I like the precision I watch it right now. I see both opponents are taking their time they're pacing themselves they're looking for the opportunity because they know that each one of them are seasoned strikers right now you see a little bit more mixing up you know I me mean? i think the the filling out process is kind of expiring mm -hmm. as we speak so um i just look to see some more high level striking and um i don't see anybody taking a takedown or a shot or any type of wrestling approach to this i think it's going to be a high level sharp striking war thanks t wood look Kenny, in the pre-fight conversations, Yandrova said, I have stronger grappling, and Kamakanji said, no, this is going to be a striking battle. So it'll be interesting to see if Yandrova or her corner decide to try and implement some grappling to find an advantage when there's uh, a lot of evenness here. Yeah, I, I think if one of these ladies start to get the worst of it, they're going to start to mix things up with their grappling. Got some big shots there from Yandrova. But Kavakaji continues to press forward. Oh, big shots! Nice left hook landed twice from Yandrova. Landing strikes backing up, Kenny. That, that is something that I just never could get on board with. Well, it, it, it's a sign of a high-level striker for sure. We'll bring in Vitor Belfort. Vitor, what do you think of these blitzing attacks? I think it's phenomenal. I see a lot of maturity. I see fire. I see gut. I see like they have the heart of a lion, lioness. These these women are impressing me a lot with the strike. See, they're not looking to back down. They're moving forward. Jacqueline is doing something so phenomenal that she's not backing down at all. She's putting the pressure. This fight is gonna be fire. Nice counter striking from Yandrova as she moves backwards, but as Vitor mentioned, Jacqueline Cavalcanti with 90 seconds remaining in round number one has been the pursuer. Yeah, and that's exactly what she needs to do as the taller, rangier fighter. Nice straight jab from Yandrova has found its home more than a few times. Yeah, she is sharp, man. Excellent jab in her own right and throwing and putting together some beautiful combinations as well. Nice knee there. Oh. Snaps the head back of Kavalkanchi. Inside and outside, Yandrova finding some success. Ian Parker, you've got Kavalkanchi straight in this one. What do you think as round one comes to a close? I think both women are doing a great job. I think it's a very tight contest. Kavakanti just landed a nice counter there. Uh, I'm still comfortable with this pick. I think she's going to get it done. Those knees have been doing a little bit of damage, too. So as long as she stays composed, doesn't blitz in and get too aggressive, I think she's going to win this one still. Beautiful flick jab there by Kavakanti. And now she's starting to get her leg game going. She's also switching stances a little bit, uh, back and forth with the orthodox and southpaw stance. 10-second clapper, and we'll see the second round oh. potentially for the first time tonight as Yandrova bounces up from a slip. Yeah, she tried to throw that spinning back fist, and uh, Kavakanchi put her on her butt with that teeth. Jarvis Landry, one round down. What are you thinking so far? 
I think both fighters are keeping a great pace. I think Jacqueline, she's doing a great job of approaching, but still being enough on the outside. Oh, no, he froze. <laughs> Take a look at a replay here. Kenny, walk me through these. Well, beautiful exchanges from both ladies here. Beautiful switch kick there by Cavalcanti. Nice exchange there by both ladies. Just kind of firing in the pocket there. As Cavalcanti landing a right hand. Androva returning with some nice combinations. Beautiful left hook to finish there from Cavalcanti. Nice left hook from Yandrova there. Just kind of going tit for tat here. There's a beautiful little push kick there to end the round. Yandrova missed on that spinning back fist and beautiful push kick there from Cavalcanti. So Ready? our lovely red Ready? girl, Lauren, had to hold up the two for the first time tonight. Yes. Earning her keep, so to speak. Five more minutes in the second frame. You see the stats come in at the bottom of your screen. Now Yandrova, the live odds swinging in her favor. Excuse me, pre-fight odds. Nice jab there from Cavalcanti. This has been a very technical fight so far. Yandrova, very, very good at getting in and getting out. Sharp combinations from Yandrova. Yandrova has a lot of fight experience overall. Fighting in Muay Thai kickboxing actually fought Valentina Shevchenko. Broke her rib in that match. And Yandrova, as tough as they come. And Kavakanchi switching to southpaw stance again. In the first round, she had some success with it. And just there, she did as well. But Yandrova able to push her back with a combination. One of our winners from earlier tonight, Jessalyn Michelle, put her stiff right hand on display, watching the action. Remember, oh, oh nice right hand there from Yandrova. Both ladies do a great job of setting up their combinations with feints, and Yandrova starting to find a little bit more success as she starts to move forward and back up Cavalcanti. Yeah, switch, switched her feet there and stomped down on a lead right hand. I wonder if those leg kicks from Yandrova are starting to take its toll on Cavalcanti. Oh. Another jab. Excellent movement there. And now a combination. Oh, right Ooh, hand. That hurt her. That hurt Kavakachi. Yandrova's right hand. Oh, on the retreat, another right hand. Like a laser. Now Yandrova swinging away. Kavakachi still in big trouble. And there she shoots for a takedown. Seeking a bit of reprieve from the onslaught. My goodness, nice heavy defense hand. There. Oh, and another, another huge right hand. Kavakachi. Dives for a takedown and ends up flat on her stomach. Well, Kavakachi doing a good job of not allowing Yandrova to move to her back. Man, is she tough. You saw Yandrova look to the wow. corner and almost roll her eyes like, I hit her with those right hands. How do I get this girl out of here? Yeah, I mean, Kavakachi showing some serious toughness. Yandrova landed right hand after right hand. She tries to go to a takedown. Kavakachi stays on her feet. What a round from Yandrova. Under two minutes here in round number two. Kavalkanchi being stalked with her back against the cage. Oh. Kavalkanchi landing right hand some good right hands. Yeah, a couple. Good takedown defense here from Yandrova, who's found an advantage here in the striking exchanges. And Yandrova starting to slow down a little bit. You wonder if she kind of punched herself out a little bit or if she's just trying to finish the job on the mat, but crazy toughness from Kavakachi. Keep the fingers in, ladies. Keep the fingers in. Looks like Kavakachi has, has cleared the cobwebs out. 
But still on the retreat, Yandrova pressuring her, putting her back against the cage. Yeah, I think those leg kicks really took their toll on Kavakanchi. Oh, big right hand from Kavakanchi. And followed it up with the jab back and forth here in round wow. number two. Another nice jab snaps the head of Yandrova back. Yeah, Yandrova cannot take her foot off the gas pedal here. You can't get complacent. Incredible toughness on display from Kavokanchi. Oh! Left hook and a right hand sneaking through. Kavokanchi perhaps turning the tide in this last minute of round number two. Absolutely. She's battling back now. Yandrova now returns with the right hand. Seems to hurt the left eye of Kavokanchi. Spinning back fist and a right hand and now a left. Once again, Kavokanchi stumbling back. What a crazy round. when you turn. And they swing wow. away to the bell in round number two. Wow. Hey, watch that elbow when you turn. Watch that elbow when you turn. Yeah, her left eye ate that big right hand from Yandrova. She's feeling it. Incredible round. Back and forth in the striking exchanges. This fight is still taking place on the feet. Yeah, Yandrova landed early and often beautiful right hands excellent blitzes really kept the pressure on Kavakanchi she was trying to take her out in round two but somehow Kavakanchi either just with her toughness or her ability to get to the clinch was able to survive and even finish strong in round two we're seeing fatigue in the corners a battle of attrition perhaps up in round three. Vitor, what do you think? I'm seeing two professionals. I see the season right now. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for these two women, man. They are so excited. It's amazing. Jarvis Landry, what are you expecting in round number three? Man, a lot of heart. A lot of heart. We see a lot of heart. I think I think if, um, if we can keep seeing land, them landing punches, I think, you know, one of them may go down here pretty soon. Tyron Woodley, as we open round three, will we see a finish in the final frame? Maybe we see a finish, but I, I'm waiting the performance on this fight more because the level of striking from both women are such a high level that whoever goes out here and gets his victory, they, they really got my eyeball set on it. Well, Kenny Florian, we had a good run with all those first round finishes in a row. <laughs> but if you're gonna end a, a streak of first round finishes, you wanna do it with a fight like this one. Absolutely, and listen, we saw it in last week, just because you get an early finish doesn't mean that you're gonna get the contract. Sometimes in seeing more minutes out there and seeing the kind of toughness that we've seen so far as we head into round three, sometimes that could be even more impressive. So both of these women just showing some high level mixed martial arts here. You're absolutely right. It's not just about mowing over an opponent. It's about putting your mixed martial arts skills on display. And we've seen a lot of that from both of these women. Yandrova versus Kavokanchi delivering here in our featured bout on Fubo TV. Yeah, not making it easy for the celebrity panel and for the fans watching at home. Wow. And there the length of Kavalkanchi paying some dividends in that combination. Did a much better job of staying out of range of the counter strikes. And, 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 you know, you hear Vitor and Tyron talking about what they're seeing out there. They're impressed because everything is balanced from these ladies. They're not throwing themselves out of position. They're landing three, four, five strike combinations. Really impressive to watch. I feel attacked right now. <laughs> uh, you were sharp as well, my friend. Kamakanchi now with the dirty boxing. She's been impressive here in the early part of round number three. Yeah, sometimes you, you kind of need to go to your corner, recenter yourself, and get back in there. And now she looks very focused out there and back to stalking her opponent. And again, you wonder what happened to Yandrova in round two. Did she punch herself out, Sean? And now Kamakanchi's landing. Oh! A right hand snaps the head oh. back and a left as well. Oh, and a double right. These are sharp punches from both ladies here. Kavokanchi feeling it now. Oh, 
Vito, earlier we saw a fight where you were asking for more accuracy in the strikes. These punches are landing. I'm, I'm watching a greatness over here. You guys are revealing something so special. These two women are so technical. They are so tough, so durable. And we see right now a, a, just an art. This is a, like, a, I'm seeing like I'm painting. This is like a painting a Picasso right now. PFL, oh, what a, look at that, look at that. Oh my God, Casey stuff. Look at that right hand about six times here in round number three. Whoa. And you drove it keeps coming. Uh, this fight is absolutely delivered. I, I mean, they, they maybe not stop punching for maybe two seconds. I mean, they, they just keep moving forward and throwing combination after combination. The skill, the conditioning, the toughness, just next level. We come up on 90 seconds remaining in this fight. PFL Challenger Series, win a contract, become a millionaire. That's the dream you're trying to keep alive. And these women fighting their way potentially to a finish. There is no question that is in the back of their minds right now. They are fighting hard for that contract. My goodness. Kenny, at this rate, it may very well come down to how the judges scored round number one. I think yeah. Yindrova clearly got round number two. And Cavalcanti appears to be in the lead here in round number three. She's landed heavier punches. But we've seen the tide turned a couple of times in this fight, so I don't want to get out ahead of myself. Uh, I know it. I mean, this is not an easy fight to score by any means. Both ladies have had some tremendous moments in this fight. And I think you're right, round one might have been the, the most difficult to score in my eyes as well. But this is the advantage of Kavakachi, who has been moving forward. And, you know, Yandrova was landing shots, but it does always look good for you if you're the, the, the fighter moving forward. And she has done that in round one. She has done that here in round three. And now, just as this fight comes to a close, Jacqueline Kavakachi's past that century mark. Over 100 strikes landed. Wow. Ten seconds remain, and a flurry from both of them. You hear a quarter, don't stop. Amazing fight. Great sportsmanship on the hug. Kavakaji thinks she's done enough. How will the judges see this one? Wow. What will our celebrity panelists think? What do you, the fans, think? All of it matters on Fubo TV. Get your popcorn ready. Join Hall of Famer Terrell Owens and 
Matthew Hatchett as they discuss the world of football and culture. The superstar guests on Get Your Popcorn Ready on Fubo Sports Network or wherever you get your podcasts. Redcon 1, Cajun Omelette's post-fight stats. Back and forth they went. Round one very close. Round two in favor of Martina Indrova. I think round three perhaps. The volume and accuracy in favor of Jacqueline Cavalcanti. A tough one to judge as the numbers there will reflect. Here's our carparts.com damage meter. Jacqueline Cavalcanti absorbed 62 strikes to the head. Her low left leg took a little damage as well. Walk me through the replays, Kenny Florian. My goodness. I mean, this was back and forth. There's a, a beautiful combination there from Yandrova that dropped Cavalcanti. That was in round two. She followed it up with some good ground and pound. Cavalcanti did a great job of getting back to her feet, though. Showed some serious toughness. Big time gut check for her. Yandrova hurting her big time in round two. But then this is where she started to battle back. Started landing some good shot, shots at the end of that round. Yandrova, though, did her best to try to finish the job. Was unable to do that. Serious composure and toughness from Cavalcanti as she landed some beautiful combinations of her own. Vitor Belfort, very impressed with the performances of both women there. Jarvis liking what he sees. And now Sean O'Connell is in the cage with the official decision. Sean. All right, Kenny, we have a split decision. We go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Daniel Torres scores it 29-28, Yindrova. Judge Jed O'Connor has it 29-28, Cavalcanti. And Judge Troy Winkapaw scores this bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Martina Yindrova. Oh! Martina Yandrova, a hard-fought decision victory. It looked like in the second round you turned it up and maybe you would get a finish. But here we are, split decision victory. Did you think you would get the finish there in round two? Uh, I, in second round, I wanted to finish her. And then I get tired a little bit. So the third round was uh, hard for me. But I felt like a winner and I'm very happy. Felt like the winner. You are the winner here. Do you think what you did tonight is enough to earn a PFL contract? I hope uh, all the people will uh, vote for me because uh, I think I'm the best. <laughs> An impressive performance, a split decision victory from Martini and Drova. And we'll find out who the two finalists are for the PFL contract when we come back on Fubo TV.
All right, welcome back, fight fans, to PFL Challenger Series action here at Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. We will narrow it down. Four fights, four incredible fights. Four winners will narrow them down to two finalists here momentarily. But first, a word from president of fighter operations, Ray Seffo. Wow, what a night. I thought the women bought it tonight. And I said this yesterday that I was looking forward and I was excited to watching the women tonight. They all came and fought well. Congratulations to the four, uh, four winners. And of course, um, thank you to all the other women that competed also. So good luck to you four ladies. All right, with that, we're going to narrow it down to our finalists. When I call your name, please step forward. Our first finalist, Martina Yindrova. Our second finalist tonight, Jesslyn Michelle. Congratulations to you, ladies, and of course, to our other winners tonight. Hopefully, we will see you again soon inside of a PFL cage. Thank you. You may exit. Vote now. In just a few minutes, you, the fans, will have a say in who earns a life-changing PFL contract. You participate in the Bud Light fan vote by casting your vote on Fubo TV's fan view or go to Twitter at PFL. MMA. Vote now. Two finalists, one contract when we return on Fubo TV. PFL on Fubo TV has been brought to you by the United States Air Force Reserve. Learn more at AFreserve.com. Next Level Hydrogen Water, the official water of the PFL. Carparts.com. Get the right parts right now at Carparts.com. And by Columbia Care, the official CBD partner of the PFL. All right, welcome back, fight fans. The moment we've been waiting for coming up real quick. Four fights tonight, four winners narrowed down to these two finalists, Martina Yandrova and Jesslyn Michelle. Of course, we know that in the Challenger Series, you need to earn some votes. Julie Stewart-Binks, what does our celebrity panel say? Sean, it's been thrilling action start to finish. Tyron, what are your final thoughts on the final two? You know, when I look at when I look at Jesla Michelle, it was a wrestling and a showmanship for me, for sure. 
literally the right hand found a home that's a new tool you can add to your toolbox you have a right hand that many women will be scared of when you look at um martina high level striking against a high level striker kept a composure did not gas out and literally literally showed a lot of showmanship well, Tyron, only one of these fighters can walk away with your vote, the celebrity panel's vote. What did the three of you decide as the winner of your vote for the PFL contract? Hard for us to vote. And it wasn't even a, a unanimous voting amongst us as a panel, but as a panel, we came together and our vote is going to go to none other than Martina Androva. We, we have to go with you. All right, so the celebrity panel has weighed in. Their vote cast in favor of Martina Yandrova. Of course, you, the fans, here on PFL Challenger Series have a say. And our Bud Light fan vote is cast in favor of Jesslyn Michelle. So now we go to the tiebreaker. The tiebreaking vote belongs to PFL President of Fighter Operations, Ray Seffo. I do not envy you this duty tonight, Ray. Yeah, no, definitely is a tough one. Um, I thought uh, Justin showed that, you know, what she was made of. She had a big right hand, but in Martina's uh, output and the way the fight went, it was like night and day. And so Martina is the winner and also gets the contract to the season. Martina Yandrova gets the contract. Congratulations to Martina Yandrova out of the Czech Republic, making that long trip worth it. Martina, congratulations. The newest PFL women's lightweight. How does that sound? It's uh, un unbelievable. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm surprised, but uh, I did everything to the fight and Thank you very much. I'm happy. Congratulations to you. We will see Martini and Drova during the PFL 2022 season. Now, look, it's not just about the contract because we've got a Columbia Care move of the night. And with the Columbia Care move of the night award, you get an extra $5,000. That belongs tonight to Jackie Cataline for a technical submission rear naked choke victory stop, that stop, is your stop. columbia care move of the night cataline in her mma debut does not go home empty-handed be sure to join us at the same time same place next friday featherweights will get their shot in the pfl challenger series eight of the top 145 pound fighters from around the globe looking for a life-changing pfl contract Coverage begins on Fubo TV at 8.30 Eastern. For JSB, Candy Florian, Ian Parker, our celebrity panel, I'm Sean O'Connell. Good night.